So for the clips, I'm gonna cover both games that I won and also others that I lost. Because in the end, through the loss, we get suggestions and through the win, we get proofs. About how to sequence our plays. Let's take a look at this game against Voiceless where I went second. Of course, he had only one play, so we will stop him. But he also has Imperm, Nibiru and also Ash in hand. Starts by activating Barrier, of course he negated it, and then he sets Imperm and Pass. We drew the Wildwind and we also have Uvolup in hand. Here I have to decide if I want to start with Soul or if I want to make him guess by starting with Crimson Gaia. I decided to start with Soul because I technically wanted to play around Roll, but if you think about it, it's probably better to start with Gaia. If you activate Gaia and you let it resolve, you will add a vision and if he draws, you will still end on Outred. But if he doesn't have Droll and instead he ashes the Crimson Gaia, you can still perform your full combo in normal summoning Soul. Instead, if you summon Soul and he gets interrupted, you won't be able to perform your full combo. Nonetheless, by already having a non-tuner in hand, we are guaranteed to end at least on an Outred, which can cover Barrier on the following turn. We also have an end trap for the normal summon that he might draw. He said, I normal summon Soul, negate with Ash, and go ahead by special summoning Wildwind. That's insane going second, because it allows me to summon Quibelt. Target his Barrier, because his set can only be an end trap or a card that he couldn't activate. So, either way, I'd rather take rid of his follow-up. Of course, he negates it with Imperm, and then I can activate Gaia, search for Vision, I special summon Vision, here it's just my fourth summon, so even if he has Nib, he cannot summon it, and by opening with Uvolup, we are already playing around Nibiru. You might argue that if we didn't open with it, which is just a one-off, we would have searched Bone and we would have played into Nib, but we are going second. We'll never try to make a Crimson Resonator line, so we would have sent Uvolup anyways and the follow-up was always guaranteed. In this case, we're gonna summon the Othred, then we can trigger Vision, and the opponent decides to Nib. Vision is gonna add Red Zone, now with Uvalup we can banish the Othred in order to summon it, we are gonna confidently set Red Zone and on his draw phase and summon back the Othred and we still have two interruptions into his three end traps. So I'd suggest to anyone who says that this deck can't play through end traps to take a look at this game. Here he decides to make Typhon because in the end it's his only option but we can easily OTK even through it. We also had Valer in hand. I even let Barrier resolve because at this point he can't threaten my Othred by any mean. No turn, I draw an irrelevant card because I already have anything that I need to OTK. Knowing that he has Typhon on the field, he can no longer nib even if he draw another one, so he have no issues. I even summon Red Rising but it was completely unnecessary and I will cover more about the level 8 line going second into the next replace. Made the Scarred, I only need to put up some bodies in order to reach the threshold. Now, another similar game. Once again, I lost the dice roll so I have to go second and this time I'm playing against Marinces, not the most competitive deck but I'm gonna show you how we were able to OTK through Ash and Nib going second. So he makes his own board and as soon as he threatens a Bahamut Shark, I Nib. I don't know if he had a better play, he ended on nothing, but he had Ash and also Nib in hand. In this case, I start with Resonator Call, of course I have Foolish, so I'm confident to be able to play in any case. Once again, I search Soul, it's not an issue to have a Nib on the board, because we are never gonna try to summon the Crimson Resonator in second. One huge thing that we have at our disposal go second is the ability to OTK just starting with Soul or even with just Bone Archfiend. So, not only we're able to access consistently three interruptions going first, but we also have a one card OTK. Now, I normal summon Soul and he ashes it. As I said, I have Foolish for the Bone Archfiend. So, I send the Bone Archfiend, summon it back, sending Nib. I could have kept it, but since I have the Dust Walker in hand, I know that he needs to discard for cost. I'd rather get rid of Nib, because ending damage is definitely not an issue for this deck. So, I summon back Bone. I use its effect, I send Vision to the graveyard and I add the Crimson Gaia. Here I didn't pay attention to the fact that he had a banished card, because the craziest thing is that not only Soul Resonator is a one card OTK, but it's also a guaranteed OTK playing around Nib, because if the opponent has a banished card, as soon as you resolve your Bone Archfiend, you get access to Crimson Gaia, and with those two 
instead of going into Red Rising as I did in this game, you can immediately go into Scarred by making Bone Archfiend level 5. And with Gaia you can search Vision, summon Vision and your fifth summon will be a Dispatter. As I said, if the opponent has a banished card, can negate the Nibiru. Usually, when I go second, if I'm able to resolve this line and I put a Dispatter on the board, I don't even care about what he has on the field, I don't try to stop him from reaching follow-up, cause I already know that I'll be able to access main interruptions eventually to OTK, so I usually keep the Dispatter for Nibiru. However, this time I had so many extenders that I didn't pay attention and I made a suboptimal play which is summon the Red Rising. Second, you literally have no reason to do it, unless you are specifically trying to force one of his back row. However, the Dispatter line that I have highlighted doesn't really need to resolve effects on the field, so even if he has Imperm or something like that, he will never prevent you from OTKing. In another game that I rewatched, I made this exact same misplay, I had only Droplet and it was enough to prevent my OTK and to lose the game on the following. So keep attention to the importance of the level 8 play going second. It becomes absolutely crazy if he has a banished card. Here I summon the vision, I use those two to go into Scarred, and then I can summon the Synchro Resonator. Now he decides to nib. I'ma be honest, even if he waited, it wouldn't have changed much because I have just too many resources, but nibbing here allows me to OTK so easy. Now I get to recycle vision, to also summon the Red Dragon Archfiend. I have so many resources that I can even search the red zone and pitch it with Duskwalker, and from there it's basically a freestyle because you can provide as much damage as you want. So with each of the importance of sequence your plays correctly and also to know as many lines as you can possibly remember. Now, about the importance of non-tuners in order to push going second, I have just an example here. This time I wasn't playing the UFO loop, I cut it some time ago because uh, yes, you'd like to free as much space as possible for non-engines and stuff like that, but this game will highlight how poor of a decision it is. Because basically, if you go second and your opponent has removals, you don't draw the supay, you only have one push. So oh, you're gonna lose to literally any sort of removal. And that's a perfect example. I have an insane amount of tuners, I have even Resonator Call and even Uvolup. We saw how strong Uvolup can be. We don't have the option to search for a non-tuner with Soul Resonator, because I'm not playing one. Yes, we drew Crimson, we can special summon it, but as soon as the Bonarchfin hits the field, we're gonna punish it with Mirror Jade and our game will be immediately lost. So it didn't took much time to put it back and stay on the lineup that I've just shown. Other game features the combo with Soul Resonator and Supay under Shifter. As you can see, it's game two, we're going first against Flu and he opens with Shifter. Now, with Soul Resonator, you're able to search the Synchron and safely summon the Supay. In this case, I also had Gaia, but unfortunately I wasn't already playing the Finnish Golem, otherwise we would have ended with three interruptions. And keep in mind that we didn't draw a single copy of Imperm, Ash or Call by the Grave. Instead, I was forced to add the Dead Zone, and then I follow by summoning the Supay, pitching another copy of it, and I'm gonna summon the Red Rising and use it and Soul to summon the Othred. Now, since Shifter is on play, and summon the Synchron, use it and Othred to make the Dispatter, and the Othred will be banished, so we can summon it back with Dispatter, meaning two very strong interruptions, both in the matchup and also in general. And that's crazy, because once again it shows the importance of Duskwalker and how our deck build choices help to play through one of our main loose conditions and one of the most feared cards in the game. If his hand didn't include the quick play spell, he wouldn't have been able to overcome this board with evenly map and Rubina in hand. Just crazy if you think about it. Those type of options to play around loose conditions, it's another thing that raises the win rate of the deck. And the exact same scenario came up in one of the tournaments that I played, that time against Kashtira, which can be an even easier matchup. Now, talking about non-engines and also cards that help to play around loose conditions, this time we're going to see how the deck can play through Super Poly and also stay in the game and try to win it. We don't really have an option. Of course, 
Super Poly will always resolve, we can only summon Dark Dragon Synchrons from the extra deck, so there's no way to make a board that can't be Super Poly. However, there's a specific pattern that we can follow in order to mitigate the influence of it into our board. This time we start with just the usual soul line, but we also have foolish in hand. This is just the usual combo, but with an access to Uvalup. It can be the foolish itself, or even an access to Crimson, already drawing the Uvalup and many more. So, send Crimson with Bone, we make the Red Rising, we summon it back, and it's just usual stuff. Now, we go into Scarred, we add the Red Zone, Use them to go into Othred, summon the Dragon Archfiend, recover the vision from the graveyard, and now we have the Dispatter. Since we have Prosperity in hand, as soon as we take out the last guaranteed card from the deck, we are going to use Prosperity to dig for non-engines, which is an option that is only available if you play hand traps or quick play spells. So we reveal Effect Veiler, and now all of a sudden we have 3 interruptions plus 2 hand traps. What happens is that since we have Prosperity, we are going to guarantee to have Banished cards. So, this pattern will always be live, we can safely use Uvolup to banish a card, which is going to be the Scarred, it can float, and that's the reason why I never banish the second Red Dragon Archwind with Prosperity, I'd rather banish the Scarred itself, and also it makes the Red Zone immediately live. Usually we make Red Zone live eventually when we trigger this pattern on our opponent's turn, but if we have this setup, which once again is just a two card combo, pretty easy and super accessible, we have the option to summon the Scarred on our third zero without being scared of not having a banished card, or use the second trigger of Uvalup, which we always need to keep a viable in order to play through a late nib. And that's another big misplay that I always notice when I see other people replays with the deck. Now, as I said, with this pattern we can summon back the Scarred, we set the red zone and we pass. And here we face our worst possible matchup, having the worst possible non-engine that he can play, which is Super Poly. Here probably he makes a mistake, because he pitches the Api, which is absolutely relevant instead of the Destiny Hero Malicious. Fuses away the Othred and the Dispatter. If we didn't make that line with Uvalup, at this point we wouldn't have a field. Instead, we have a Scarred, which is not only a floater but also makes the red zone live. And we were always playing around Nib because we kept an activation of Uvalup, which even if the opponent nibbed at the very last spot, would have banished the Dispatter, which not only would have been a guaranteed interruption but also would have made Gaia trigger or summon back the Scarred from the graveyard in this case and also making Red Zone live once again. So, even through a late nib, we would have ended on two interruptions. But instead, it's super polyed and we still have one guaranteed interruption on the board plus two hand traps. We have a counter for planet being the Red Zone, which we guaranteed choosing that combo line. And also we have the Ash Blossom for Sharon. Not only that, we also have Veiler to play through stuff like a Zombie Vampire line. We can't really prevent Super Poly, it will always hit the field and it will be dangerous, but we can mitigate its effect by just adding more guaranteed interruption, which in this case are hand traps, which are also the best possible cards that you can play to go second in the Snake Eye format. And here we have another same example. Believe me, I have a ton of them. Once again, we choose to go with that same line and we're fortunate enough to draw Prosperity, so all the theory that we have already discussed is in play, which will lead to a Dispatter, Othred, Scarred on the board by keeping another activation of Uvalup and the Red Zone live. This time with Prosperity we reveal another copy of Veiler, which I choose to take instead of Nibiru because we are planning to end on a crazy board, and even if we can easily get rid of it, especially if we have Vualup in the graveyard, I choose to take the second Veiler, thinking that it was just enough. Instead, the opponent had Super Poly and a bunch of playable cards, but let's see what happens. He starts with it, he gets rid of our two monsters, but we still have the red zone, so we have interruptions against his four cards. Once again, they're just enough to gain a turn and to be able to win on the following. I remember that I played even another game against Ubel, which has this equip, who gets an insane amount of interruption, but due to this specific line, I could pop the equip with Red Zone and combining it with my hand traps, I was completely fine and I won the game through it. 
So this shows the importance of non-engine to play around our main loose conditions. For the last clip of today, I'd like to show you this game where I went second against Manadium, basically without non-engines, made a minimal board, probably was playing around Nib. I think that it highlights how good we are at winning the War of Attrition because our cards are able to provide resources over tools and we have OTKs so easy to access. We weren't really sharing end traps. We have more videos like that where maybe we opened with three end traps each. We kept throwing them at each other for tours until one of us runs out of it. But I choose this game because I think it shows how resilient we can be even going second and even if we didn't open with the best possible line. So, it starts by normal summoning Visa Sansara, which I believe is the weakest normal summon, because if you veil it, it's no longer a Visa Starfrost, so he cannot access the Scareclaw line, but he had Call by the Grave. As we can see, he doesn't have any other extender, but I think he could still combo more than he did, and probably felt that he was just fine, because he also had enemy controller and droplet in hand. He chose to go with this line by just making Baron and guaranteeing to have follow-up. Here I start with Gaia in order to search the Soul Resonator. As you can see, I also have Bone Archfiend and Super A, but I also have two blanks, which are Ash Blossom, drawn just now, and also the Red Zone, which will never help go in second. It decides to negate and destroy the Soul Resonator, which was really impactful in this case. If he just negated it, I would have probably been able to even OTK. Now I have to play through it. As I said, we have this Super A plus Bonarchfin line, which is just insane. Imagine how strong we would have been in this case. Instead, I decided to start to push card by card with Bon. I sent the Crimson Gaia because I wanted to preserve as much information as possible. But here he had enemy controller, which was something that I really wasn't thinking about. And I was a little surprised, but he still had a chance because in the end, if Super A resolves, I'm gonna, at the very least, access an Othred, which in this case will kill his follow-up. He had one more non-engine, so he can send the Bone Archfiend and also negate the Red Rising. Here I immediately thought that I lost, instead drew probably the worst possible card. However, keep in mind that we had a really strong play with Supe and Bone and we just weren't able to spot it. So once again, this is the importance of practicing all your deep lines. Here he has the fields well, but I have the Ash Blossom, so he doesn't really have great follow-up, and he just decides to pop the Red Rising and to pass. Probably wasn't aware that we are able to OTK, even if we don't have nothing, just discarding our draw for turn and summoning back the Bone Archfiend. And that's exactly what happened. I use the Bone Archfiend, I send the Vision, I add the Crimson Gaia, once again I made this decision to make it level 3, but this time he doesn't have a banished card so we won't be able to play effectively through Nib, and if you pay attention, if you go immediately into the level 8 play, you won't be able to Nib before you trigger the Scarred to summon from the extra deck, as if you go into the level 6 first, at least there is a chance that he nibs when you have the Scarred on the field, because when people is uncomfortable with your deck, they tend to interact with it as soon as they can. So, even though it wasn't the case, that might come up in some weird scenarios. Here, a normal summon soul, we add whatever, we have our guaranteed OTK. So I hope you guys enjoyed this long video, I have at least 50 matches from last format and I believe I will make way more in this one because in two weeks we will be at the Italian Open and after that we will start to prepare for the national season. So be sure to stay tuned for a lot of more content and hopefully for some achievements that we might get down the road. See you guys in the next one.